Ladies and gentlemen, let's take us a little ride here and we'll discuss a few things. The uh, pretty day today. And uh, we're going to kind of discuss that. I know it's taken a long time for this twisted T bike and everything, but I got a lot on my plate. I do a lot of stuff every day. And when I get home, I've got birds to feed, I've got dogs to feed, I've got the pond to deal with, I got fish to feed, and every two days I gotta scrub the fish's balls. Now you heard me correctly, I said I have to scrub the fish's balls because in the waterfall there's bile balls in there and they have to be scrubbed. They pick up all the dead algae and what have you that goes through the UVA sterilizer. But sometimes I just have to take a ride and get away and clear my mind. Uh, and this is one of these rides. And we're going to go a little different way this time. Kind of show you a little bit of the town. Uh, we're not that far in the backwoods. We have a McDonald's, the Sonic. Uh, we got Auto Park. We got a Winn Dixie. We're not that backwoods. So. And it's the discussion that I've been reading about the cost of parts and what have you. And if you're a person that drives one of these things and that's your only uh, source of you know, transportation, back and forth to work, to the store, stuff like that. God bless you. You have my uh, complete respect. But I'm sure you're not the person worried about the cost of a, of a cylinder or something like that. You just want a good bike that's A to B and uh, reliable. And that's pretty much it in a nutshell. For me, though, it's a hobby, and the cost of a part is not a, going to be an issue. Uh, it it doesn't matter really what it costs. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything for people that you know if they want to. Minarelli Jug or, or whatever. There are some other names out there, but I don't know what they are right off the bat. Then wherever they get it, or however they get it, I'm sure people are savvy enough to, you know, do their, do their information and do their research and what have you. And get basically what they want. And then cost is not really an issue. Uh, uh, people that want a bike that performs well and what have you, and they were into that thing, don't have a shop or something like that, they're, they're just going to buy it. Cost is not an issue. You know, and then you have some people that say, I could do this, I could do that, then they might go the less expensive route. Now with the China doll stuff, what I like, it's a hobby. You know, it's a $50 jug, you know, if it tears up, you know, if you tear something up, then cranks are not expensive, stuff like that. And they're all aluminum. Uh, the cast iron, if, from what I understand, it's a scooter jug would be in a enclosure with a flywheel, which is a 
air moving flywheel and it will have constant air blowing over it all the time so you know heat's generally not an issue now i do know in the rc boats they take ten thousandths off the top of the piston above the ring the top ring i only think they have one above the ring they take ten thousandths off of it because that's a part of the motor that's probably going to be the hottest on the whole motor is the very top of the piston so they take ten thousandths off the side of it down to the top of the first ring and uh that pretty much ends that issue of scrubbing the cylinder and what have you i've said this many times you got to remember cast iron in itself is used for exhaust manifolds and everything for the property of not expanding at all and that's the reason it's used cast iron doesn't is, is very ductile and it doesn't expand very much pretty much any at all so what I do with my pistons on all my bikes is I take 15 off the top down put it in the lathe cut 15 thousandths off and that's me showing you my hand my hand got crushed uh, a couple weeks ago and that's neither here nor there we won't speak of this again but I take 15 thousandths off the top of the piston down to the first ring, clean it up, because that's the hottest part of the motor. It's gonna expand the most. So if you cast iron jug guys wanna try doing that, give it a shot. Tell me what you think. The uh, If it works, if it doesn't work, it's just a piston. That might stop the soft seizure or cold seizure or whatever it's called but anyway this is a cast iron sleeve and this I took 15 thousandths off of it I checked the health of the jug here a while back and there's absolutely mere finish on it so it's good to go it does anywhere from uh, 40 to 44 miles an hour all day long uh, you can crank it up. You don't have to give it blasts or anything like that. You can crank it up and let it go. For the past week and a half, so I've been under the weather. I haven't been feeling really well. And uh, just the weather, uh, pollen, what have you. Nothing major. But in building the Twisted T-Bike, you have to remember this is a year-long project and you know you can look back where I started there to let the build begin that's the frame I used pull tubing through the frame for all the wires and uh, cabling and all that to hide everything and uh, I also built the orange crush bike in that period of time too and uh it's taken a while that i have a concept of what i want the bike to look like and that's the reason sometimes like today i just have to get away from it clear my mind and just have a nice ride so that's what we're doing uh and discussing this thing about squabbling over cost of parts it doesn't matter and if somebody wants something from a uh, named builder, then that's their business, pretty much. So when we get up on the levee here, we're gonna do some shout outs to some really good channels. Uh, and all these channels have helped me in my endeavors with these things somewhat, in some way. And, uh, Y'all show these guys some love and, and uh, you know, check them out.
this being Memorial Day weekend. Let's think about the ones that gave us their all. And I want y'all to have a happy and safe Memorial Day weekend. And getting back to the topic of motorized bikes, there's no difference to anything as an expansion chamber because I bought a KTM 65 FMF pipe. Had to modify it heavily to get it to work. Now I'm not too sure if there's one out there that's made that performs halfway decent. And there's no expansion chamber that's gonna perform perfect on every two stroke motor. I mean, one doesn't fit all when it comes to that and you know i got lucky on this one i got it at a good price had to do a lot of modifying beating it out it was pretty much crushed but that gets down to you know when you own these things there is a certain amount of fabrication that you got to do and, and that you want to do. And like I said, this is a hobby for me. I'm going to retire here pretty soon. And I really got lucky and I picked up a tube roll that'll roll up two inch tubes. I've been looking at them and those things are very expensive. And I got this one at a really, really good price. And uh, now I'll be able to modify the frames the way I want or make a frame of my own. Uh, I don't know. Now the Twisted T-Bike is a two owner bike and it's gonna go to its other home and be over at my house and back and forth. But you're not going to hear too much more about it until I either get it running or I blow it up. So but it's going to go. I still have a lot to do, as you'll see at the end of this video. And uh, it's been a long process. And there is a way I want it to look. And I'm not going to compromise that part of it. Uh, as far as this bike goes, it runs great. I don't have to do anything to it. I just put gas in it, check a few bolts to make sure the front wheel's not going to fall off like it almost did one time. <laughs> and, but other than that, that's it. It runs great. You can twist the throttle to 40, 43 miles an hour and you can leave it there. You don't have to be on and off or anything like that. It's just a good running, good running bike, good running motor. 
and uh, the cranks balanced and all that, which I showed you in the video. I showed you how to do that, and it's not that hard to do. But if you're an individual that doesn't have a drill press, doesn't have a whole bunch of bits, doesn't have drill stops, uh, it, 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 the job just got a lot harder. And justifying the cost of buying a drill press, buying bits and everything else, or just buying off the shelf, there you go with the parts thing. Uh, it's cheaper to buy it off the shelf. You know, unless you plan on making a hundred of them, then that's a little different. But if you're going to put one in your bike, no sense of running out there. And you could probably do it with a hand drill. Uh, would you be satisfied with the outcome? I don't know. I don't think I would be. But uh, you never know. You could, it's always worth a try. I want to ask y'all a question. It, any of y'all know anything about the Falcon 911 jug? I was looking at that thing the other day, and that actually looks like something that I might try. It looks like a pretty good jug. So if you've had any experience with it, leave me a comment, please. And always leave a comment, please. That, that's my favorite part of this, is a comment. And uh, just, uh, I wanted to see if anybody has ever used one or run one and their thoughts on it and whether it was worth the $99 for the jug or not. But, uh, like I said, y'all have a really safe weekend this weekend. Uh, you know, be careful. And this community, in which I call it a community, it, we, there's a sense of freedom that you get riding these things. At 65 years old, you know, there's no license or no insurance or no registration. Uh, you know, a lot of people will buy a motorcycle and it'll sit in the garage and they'll ride it one or two times and it'll sit in the garage and you're paying insurance and all the cost of everything, you know, to keep it registered. You don't have that problem with these. You, you want to ride it, ride it. If you don't, you don't have to. And it's a sense of freedom and I get a lot of comebacks from the same people, which is awesome because that shows that there is a community here and we need to keep the community together and, uh, and no bickering, squabbling, anything like that. Of course, you're going to have drama no matter what. So we made it back to the house and we're going to take a look what I've got done on the Twisted T bike. But first, y'all are going to have to meet my pit crew. They're very important uh, for me getting these bikes up and running properly. And they're always waiting for me whenever I get back. I want to make sure the ride was safe, the ride was good, and everything else. And there we go. There's my pit crew right there. <laughs> And they're gonna ask me, so did it run okay? This, that, and the other thing. Uh, they're asking me right now, so did it do okay? Yeah, it did good. So, uh, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna see what our average speed was and our top speed. And even being owning a home and stuff like that, and, you got grass to cut, you've got, and I'm busy. I work, I've got anywhere from 40 to 50 to 60 hours a week in heavy maintenance. And uh, I'm very limited on my time because I've got some other folks that need me too. So that's the reason it's taken so long. And I haven't shown that with any love at all. I was pretty much neglecting my old bike. Still run. see what we did here on our average and 25 is our average 43 is our top 
and I think on the on the distance it was eight miles. You really can't see too much on there. But good running bike, and I can't say anything bad about it. It actually works very very well. It never gives me any problems or anything. But I would like when I like building a bike, I like building it to last. And that's the main thing. I like riding a lot more than working on. And I guess that's anybody. Now, let's get over to this. And uh, please leave me a comment. Please hit like and subscribe. Hit like, it's a simple thing. And it helps me out a bunch. And, uh, Y'all have a great Memorial Day weekend, and uh, please leave me a comment, and thank you so very much for watching. Y'all have a good day.